So this one's gonna be once again about quizzes. I do have to hurry up a little tiny bit, I guess. So I'm gonna give myself like 15 minutes or something. Um, which should always be fine, like just not gonna lie. Maybe I'm even gonna be able to have two videos each day uh, scheduled, but I think about that because I'm at this point of time, this is the, the one that's like, okay, I have covered everything now. So I might be doing two videos someday, I don't know, like it depends, you know, I'm still having quite some time left, so I might be able to do so, and I might also just be doing that, but we're gonna see, you know, we're gonna have a look at this. But we're gonna go ahead with this uh, quiz about interesting things, and I hope <laughs> that it is also interesting for you. And then I have to go to the dentist. Now that you need a special item to eat these, uh, but it sure is a nice way to start the day. What is it? It's an egg cup, or pancake plate, bacon holder, or orange juice cup. I think it is an egg cup. And yes, it is. These cups are especially handy for softball eggs so that you could track them open and tip toasts soldiers right into the runny yolk. Eggs tend to roll around on plates, so this would prevent that. Plus, they looked pretty fancy. I mean, we still have something like that, but it is only uh, out of ceramic and it's not high, but it is rather low so that the, the very bottom of the egg is kind of staple or stable. And you can eat it. I know what this is, but it looks really cool. Maybe you've had much more toned arms as a society if we had to use this item every morning. Can you identify it? It is either a rolling pin, hand washer, hand mixer, or egg beater. It is a hand mixer. And what? An egg beater. I mean, isn't it the same? Before hand mixers and stand mixers, there was the egg beater. Like most beating and grinding items for these days, it was hand cranked. The beaters looked like the ones on your hand mixer, but you literally had to hand crank a lever or lever or lever, I don't know, to move them. Is it now a leader or a windle or whatever? I don't know. The thing is, I think it's cool. I don't know. Like, of course, a lot of muscle power of just needed, but, but not that much. Not as just the really hand mixing device thing, you know, this. I don't know what it's called, but anyway. If you like it, then you should have put a stamp on it. What item below helped keep people's many stamp poles, stamps, I'm sorry, in order. Stamp rack, rubber stamp holder, filling case or cork board. Stamp rack question mark? No, rubber stamp holder. Uh, are pretty self-explanatory. They were upright contraptions with clasps, claps, clamps or slots that would hold the handles of the stamps to keep them organized all in one place and off your desk. Uh, this way the ink would stain anything it wasn't supposed to. Wouldn't stain. The more I know. If you were hosting a garden party or summer picnic back in the day, you definitely had one of these out to keep things up to temp. What is it? Is it a propane tank or something? <laughs> I don't know what it is. Insulted water jug. Drink cooler stove. Is it a stove? It's an insulted, insulated, I'm sorry, not insulted, insulated water jug. Term A jugs, the one picture that's a Boloran feather flight, where basically a giant thermos used to keep drinks cool. It's a simple concept, really, and one that's uh, been updated so much that term A jugs don't exist these days. Uh, there are plenty of similar options, though. Cool. Nice. Amazing. <laughs> Before plates were made out of ceramic or porcelain, uh, porcelain. Uh, these were used to eat off what are they? Cutting board, uh, dough bowl, prover, trencher. I don't know. It's it it seems to be out of wood and it seems to be like a plate but inverted. So you're having a wood uh, block and carved in a plate and a drinking holder thing. Yes, so I don't know, a trencher. It is a trencher. Back in the really old days where dried out pieces of bread that people would use as plates later on. What? Really? Later on, trenches were made out of wood and were flat discs with a crater in the center to prevent the food from spilling over the sides. Amazing invention, isn't it? <laughs> uh, you thought you could only get these at your local ice cream parlor, not back in the 50s. Which kitchen item helped make a summer tree dried in your home? Ice cream roller, shaved ice maker, a milkshake maker or popsicle mold? Uh, milkshake maker? Yes. Uh, you could... Well, well, we're gonna come to that. You could own your very own milkshake, milkshake maker, uh, which made milkshakes in the exact same way that you would get an ice cream cream parlor, but on more consumer-friendly scale. Salesmen used to go door-to-door -door selling them. 
amazing pretty cool uh yeah could be nice could also be kind of just i don't know unnecessary stuff so yeah but now the funny thing is your score is 73 percent the average score is 87 percent so at this point in time i wonder whether i'm just so bad or whether everyone is using those fucking hints or um yes no that's nothing but i've got 29 out of 40 correct um which is better than six percent thank you thank you very much and i mean it is still positive you know i've got more than the half so so what you know so what you'll never guess how much these vintage items cost this is interesting this is pretty interesting so we're gonna take this quiz as well by Teresa mclaughlin once again i guess and we're gonna see you know maybe it's Cool, maybe I learned something. How much did a gallon of gas cost in the 50s? A dollar, 18 cents, 29 cents, or 159? So I do think that, I mean, it's either been really cheap or just quite expensive, but I would go for 29 cents. Fuck, 18 cents! Well, I thought, back in the 1950s, the going rate for a gallon of gas was mere 18 cents. Although cars were quite less fuel efficient back then, the price of gas is quite different these days. Yes, it is. This looks... I mean, it doesn't look nice, but it looks okay. How much would a TV dinner have cost in cost you in 1971? Um, 39 cents. Yes, which is the lowest of them all. During the 70s, you could nearly buy yourself three TV dinners from under a dollar. Priced at 39 cents per dinner, it's easy to see why your, our mothers and grandmothers had freezers full of them. I mean, as I said, they don't look like just the prettiest food, but I guess, I mean, it is fine. How much would you have paid to see Back to the Future in the 80s? $4, $2.50, $1.50 or $6? Uh, $1.50, I question mark. No, $2.50. During the 80s, both you and your date could get into the movie theater for five bucks at only 25 a piece or 250 a piece. Movie tickets were quite the bargain back then, although if you saw enough of them, it would be more expensive than Netflix. I mean, Netflix isn't that expensive. I mean, of course, if you're just having it alone, if you're just, I don't know, not having it with friends or some shit, then of course it's going to be quite expensive. But if your whole family is having it and quite, you know, and you're just um uh, just splitting up the the bill then i guess it is fine for what you get i don't know i don't have netflix i personally just and i don't watch it so my family yes but no me neither or me not how much would barbie have cost in cost you in 1963 10 bucks 16 7 or 3 bucks i would go for 16 3 bucks although barbies from 1960s fetch a pretty penny on the collector's market these days they were quite a bargain at three dollars during the 60s if you look, if you like to have one of for yourself, now you can grab one for about 175 each. Fuck you. This is what I have to say. What is this? It looks like a radio. What would you have paid for an eight-track tape player? Okay, tape player. In 1970, uh, 13.95, uh, 25 bucks, 40 bucks around, and 20 bucks around. Hmm. I would say like 40, because yes, 40. If you wanted to be as groovy as your neighbors in the 70s, you would have needed to purchase a freestanding 8-track tape player at around 40 bucks. You would have had to save qu uh, for quite a while. Yes, indeed. I also thought so. I mean, uh, if you just compare it with food and stuff and all the other stuff that we have seen, like it's it's really expensive. It really is quite expensive. But I mean, I just, I mean, I can understand it, you know. Uh, how much would it cost you to solve a Rubik's Cube? To solve a Rubik's Cube? nothing you know but you have to buy one in 1983 i would say five bucks two bucks i mean they're not that expensive at this point in time there, there may be like four bucks or something or 4.99 or something or other or they're like six or something well anyway uh what do you what would you pay to read the newspaper in 1986 like 40 cents yes yeah that's cool these days staying informed could cost up to 250 a day i mean you could also just use the internet i don't know but i mean i still just uh uh i don't know like if you just think that the newspaper is cool and stuff then yeah please use it and please do that um but but i don't know like i don't know how much did a 70s beanbag jack cost 20 50 35 75 i would say 50 
20. Well, I'm really bad at this. I'm just realizing. What would you uh, what would you have paid for an Apple computer in 1986? 349, 795, 179 or 1200 bucks. Uh I would say 179 795 are you kidding me not considered cheap by any means paying 795 bucks for a new apple during the 80s was still quite pricey the computers were not yet mass manufactured and folks truly paid for the luxury i assume so yeah how much would a color tv cost you in 1956 a thousand and two hundred quite 300 795 149 349 i would say 349 a thousand fucking two hundred and ninety five dollars why if you wanted to be the first family on your block to own a color tv in 1950 in 1956 it would have cost you over a thousand dollars tv costs more than a lot of flat screens cost now uh 50s color tvs i mean i can understand that i mean it is always the case at this point in time i mean you you're always just paying more than a thousand bucks for a good phone quote unquote good you know so I don't know. I think it is just sensical that new things and uh, just the new quote unquote gadgets, the new things, they're always going to be expensive. And if they are really expensive due to manufacturing or to just um, the research and all of these factors, I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily say so, but 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 yeah, of course. I mean, yes, people always want to make money, so I can understand that. I do can understand that. How much would a comic book cost have cost you in 1960s? A buck, 15 cents, 249 or 495. I would say a buck. 15 cents. Collectible comic books can go for thousands of dollars these days. Back in 1960, you uh, could have kept with Batman for only four, uh, 15 cents as an issue. But I mean, I do have to say, like, at this point in time, we feel like, okay, you know, 15 cents is not that much. But I think back in the days when you can just actually um, compare it to buying food for, what was it, I think, 39 cents or something, then it is very, very expensive. Very expensive. Uh, I, I mean, like, comic books nowadays, what are they costing? Like, I don't know, two three four bucks or something and yes i mean you can get some food for six seven something like that so it kind of stayed the same somehow so so yeah how much would peanut butter cost in the 1980s 379 289 75 cents and or 149 i'm gonna go for the 75 cents fuck you it's one for <laughs> it's 149 when you wanted to to pacify your peanut butter cravings back in the 80s, it would have cost you 149, which is actually quite a lot, isn't it? With a good sale or coupon, you could pick it up for nearly the same price today. I mean, I do have to say, and I've seen that, like, I've seen a video like some dude buying just uh, one jar of peanut butter for fucking $15, Canadian, I think. And, and I thought, like, wow, that's pretty expensive. Like, in Austria here, um, they're costing like like, yeah, well, around just up to five bucks, I would say. Like, three, four, five, something like that in, in that range somehow. Um, which is still very expensive for me, at least. I mean, you could buy, what is it, I think, three, no, a kilo or something? One, two, three kilos of nuts for the same price, for three bucks quite, so peanuts. So it's, um, you know, you know. Uh, what would you have paid for a dozen ears of corn in 1981? Four bucks, six, five, or one thirteen. I'm gonna go for one thirteen, and it is the truth and the right thing, which is good. How much would you have paid for a home in 1959? Five thousand, thirty-two, twenty-five, twelve thousand. I do have to say, like, this is a fucking mansion. This is not a house. You know, it's a villa. Uh, so, so. I would say 25k, 12,000. I mean, as I said, compared to back in the days, it's, it's quite a lot. What was the price of mayonnaise in 1980? It must be just like just one cent, motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> actually, no. Uh, 219, 127, 349, or 429. <sighs> I would go for 127. 
And it is the truth. It's correct. Fuck, man. How much would Chelly have cost you in the 80s? And this is going to be the last one. 279, 139, 85 cents or 69 cents. I'm going to go for 69 cents. And it is not correct. It is 139. Spreading Chelly in your toast back in the 80s would have cost you 139 per jar. If you wanted pre uh, preservers, you would have paid about 10 cents more. What are preservers? Pre or preservers? Protect, maintain, care for take. Well, I don't know. How much would a bar of soap cost you in 1972? 5 cents. 20 cents. Hmm. But yeah, I think I'm going to end the episode there. So thank you very, very much for listening and or watching. And I wish you the best health and happiness and also success. And also hope that you're going to remind yourself and you're going to be remembered. Which basically means your legacy. It basically means just being a nice person. And also being remembered as a nice person. Which is a pretty, pretty fucking cool thing. Um, anyway, something else to mention is three questions. What could you... No, why are you here? What are you trying to change and what is bothering you the most? These three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea, which is a pretty cool thing. Um, yeah. Mm. Another question that I'm having for you is, what could you say, particularly say, but also do and create, but particularly say that is really going to change somebody's life? Because I totally believe that we all can say something. This is the fourth episode that I've been recording today. Uh, might be the case that I'm recording some other ones tomorrow or something it depends but yeah uh thank you very much from the bottom of my heart uh, i just truly appreciate that i appreciate everything um thank you and i'm hopefully gonna see you the next time so bye bye stay patient and cool and everything and uh kind and nice and generous and yes bye bye <laughs>